Superintendent, may I say how surprised I am to see you in the field, especially for a body found in a stairwell. It's not just any body, Alvin. It's a case in point of the kind of cancer that's eating at this neighborhood. I seem to have gathered so many interested parties. Fire department found Jane Doe this morning. Looks like she was strangled sometime last night, and all interested parties have been assured results from your team. <laughs> well, I appreciate the confidence. I still don't understand why Jane Doe would draw the attention of the IIB. You will. Could be a one-off of the ritual could indicate a pattern. Either way, the press are gonna run wild with this. Hold my coffee. Do not tell me about this. My father told me it was impolite to brag. Well, I disagree. I'm going to brag for you. You know what? I'm going to have to introduce you as my girlfriend, Tia Tremblay, the National Newspaper Award nominee. That sounds really good. Eh? Like that, right? Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Toby, I wouldn't have broken the love since start without your help. You happy? Yeah. I'm happy. Good. All right. You know what else my dad used to say? What? You can be happy at home or work, but not both. Tough man, your dad. Highly pragmatic. Maybe he was wrong about that one. Maybe. But he told the truth as he saw it, and that's what I've tried to do, too. Which is, of course, what's made me a National Newspaper Award nominee. I like this. This is bragging. <laughs> this is how you gotta do it. <laughs> but seriously, um, I'm glad you're not scared off by my telling the truth. You know, like, talking about my epilepsy. Scared a lot of other guys, so... Thank you for being so accepting. Sure. You know, not having any secrets makes me feel so much closer to you. So, the omelet of the day uh, is looking pretty good. What do you think? Up to you. Maybe surprise me. Sprung up and surrounded by a ring of fire. I could barely get past the reporters downstairs. Well, it's a 24-hour news cycle. A ritualistic killing like this feeds the beast, which is why we have to move quickly before the press whips the public into a frenzy. So what do we know about the victim? Well, the ME puts her Jane Doe at around 30 years old. There's no prints on file and no match with missing persons. Anything from the canvas? Not yet, but Superintendent Martell has pre-approved overtime. Really? If she was at the crime scene, there's a political agenda at work. I'm not saying I know where the mines are buried, but careful where you step. Okay, so there was no sign of sexual assault, even though the body was found naked? Mm-hmm. Seems odd, doesn't it? How many serial killers do it simply for the thrill? If it was the work of a serial killer, I've got Dev cross-checking the M.O. with the North American database. What do you have for us, Corporal? The M.O. doesn't match any in the serial killer database, so I think we need to rule that out. But lighting the fire and public placement of the body, I mean, is the killer just trying to display his work? But flaunting the kill implies a confidence that they won't be caught. Well, let's prove them wrong, shall we? The killer could just as easily be a female. What does forensics tell us? The killer is organized. I would say they were working in their comfort zone, somewhere close to a residence or a place of employment. If we're going to be building a profile, we should start with the victim. Dev's right. Let's start by identifying the Jane Doe. Well, she had a lot of ink. Maybe we can track down her tattoo artist. Uh, well, I thought you'd say that. So I've been bouncing around body modification chat rooms and cross-referencing the work with local artist portfolios. And I believe this is the work of one Zoe Davis. I'll pick up Toby on the way. I'll send you the address. Excuse me? We just need to ask you a few questions. Just in the middle of a sleeve. This won't take long. Is this your work? Yeah. You know this woman? Oh my god, Kelly. Do you know Kelly's last name? 
No, I don't. That's a lot of ink. I mean, that must have taken years, no? Why? Well, I didn't know her that long. Uh, we did all that in 12 months. That's a bit unusual, isn't it? She was unusual. In what way? Well, I mean, most people use the tattoo chair like a shrink's couch. Uh, Kelly barely talked. Was she emotional? Was she cried? A lot of people do. Um, tattoos can act as a catharsis. Did she ever come in here with anyone? She mentioned where she works or a place that she hangs out? I, I saw her once at the Vice Bar. I mean, maybe someone there can help you out. Do you know if she had a boyfriend? I don't think she had one. I don't want to gossip. Anything that you can tell us is going to help. Um, and she always had a lot of cash and tipped well. I, I overheard her on the phone once talking quietly to a client about meeting at a hotel. What are you saying? I think she might have been an escort. Vice Bar's been around for years. It's a very wide open clientele. We'll go check that out. Kelly was crying when she got her Phoenix tattoo. Yeah, that much ink would bring anyone to tears. It's emotional, not physical. Deb, what's going on? Striations and fibers on the neck are consistent with a braided leather strap. The thickness and imprint of a clasp suggests that a necklace was a murder weapon. Anything else? The scratches on her heels and rope marks on her wrist, post-mortem. She was killed somewhere else and then brought to the stairwell. OK, well, we have a partial ID of our victim. Her first name is Kelly. We have reason to believe that she was an escort, so run it by Vice. We got a lead from her tattoo artist. We're going to check out now. OK, bye. Johnny Willard, right? The cops are really classing up their visits. I know the bylaws. You can't execute a noise complaint during the day. Yeah, we're IIB, we're not Metro. We're here to ask you about a customer of yours. Her name's Kelly. We found her in a stairwell a block from here. You know her? We, uh, they were going off for a couple months. What's Kelly's last name? She never gave me a last name. Is that because you paid for your dates? What? Your bar has a reputation, and we have reason to believe that she was an escort. You want to knock my bar, that's fine. Everyone who pays for a drink is welcome. But don't drag Kelly through the dirt. Why else wouldn't she give a last name? Because she was private. Not a single photo in her apartment. Where were you last night at 10? Are you accusing me of something? Not yet. I was here till three. When was the last time you saw her? I saw her a couple weeks ago. Nothing since. Did she leave you? She broke it off, yeah. You know she was seeing someone else? There might have been a guy. Came in here one night. Why are you here? Get out of here! Get out of here! Who the hell was that? Who the hell was that? She said she didn't know him. I thought she was lying. We're gonna need Kelly's address. So I saw the guy Johnny saw with Kelly. He got rough with him. I can do a composite with Dev. Geographically, Johnny would work. Kelly's apartment is a block from here. Right. I saw her wearing a braided necklace. It could be the murder weapon. Well, hopefully our apartment gives us some answers. Johnny was right. No photos, no personal effects. Check this out. Shower curtain's missing. Maybe they wrapped her body in it. We'll get forensics in here. Property manager downstairs said that the rent was paid each month with a credit card belonging to a food company. So maybe one of her executives is paying for this place. Right. The guy that Johnny saw with Kelly, he puts her up here. Anytime he's away on business, Kelly brings in Johnny. He finds out and kills her. What's the name of that company? Cloud9 Organics. Let's go. We need to talk to whoever's in charge of the corporate credit cards. Oh, yeah, Mr. Hi, uh, Brent Sanders, CFO. Oh, and this is Jennifer Cowell, co-CEO. 
I'm Sergeant McCluskey. This is Special Consultant Logan. We need to know who uses this credit card. Uh, hmm. This is an exclusive card. Only my partner and I have these. That's great. Uh, is he here? Can we speak to him? Her. Uh, Sarah's actually not in the office yet. Okay, well, we'll wait. Well, is there something we can help you with? Is this her? Yes, that's my partner. <sighs> She's also our victim. Sarah and I grew up together. Prep school at Kingston, U of T. After we got our MBAs at Rotman, we started Cloud9 Organics. Sarah and Jen made Cloud9 the biggest organic food supply in the whole country. Brent, I've got this. Okay. Were you aware that Sarah was using the corporate credit card to pay for her apartment? What apartment? Sarah owns a home in Forest Hill. She was living a life of contradiction. What makes you say that? Well, how she spent her off work hours, her appearance, the only way that we could identify her was from her tattoos. It's not often that you see a CEO with that much ink. She was always covered up at work. So you didn't know she was so heavily tattooed? No. But you knew that she had some work done? As our business grew, Sarah became distant. I knew her less and less. Did you two have conflicts? Nothing meaningful. Her. Were there any personal issues that you were aware of? Sarah's parents died about a year ago. She would disappear for days at a time. Maybe the tattoos were a reaction to their death. She was known as Kelly in some circles. Did you know anything about this? I have no idea why she would do that. Where were you last night? I went to bed early. We're gonna need Sarah's laptop. She's lying. She knew about the tattoos. Well, she went by Kelly in some circles, but our victim's name is Sarah Wembley. Now, Sarah was involved in a volatile relationship with Johnny Willard, the owner of the Vice Bar. We're looking into his alibi from last night, and we've got a team of forensics at Sarah's home in Forest Hill. I saw Johnny pushing a guy who may have been Sarah's lover. Unfortunately, our composite doesn't match anything in the criminal database or the corporate files at Cloud9. We asked Jennifer about Sarah using the name Kelly, and I saw something burning. Now, Jennifer says she doesn't know anything about Sarah's tattoos, but in your read, you saw her watching Sarah get the flames inked. Mm -hmm. And Jen doesn't have an alibi. So we got flames on the victim's back, we got flames from Jen, and we got flames at the scene. I'm thinking they gotta be connected. Do you think she's capable of stringing up the body of her dead friend and lighting a ring of fire around it? Yeah, I mean, physically, I'd say she's strong enough. Or she hired our mystery man, and the ritual's just his thing. I'm gonna look into her computer and see if it can tell us anything about their relationship. Okay, talk to the tattoo artist again, specifically about the flames. Let's see if Jennifer Cowell would hate our victim enough to string her up in a stairwell. Okay. It's gonna look great. You're back? Yeah. You mentioned that Kelly's tattoos may have been a catharsis. Can you tell us more about this one? Well, she cried a lot during our sessions. I mean, I asked if she wanted to stop, but she said she needed to get it out. To get what out? <laughs> Did she ever say what it meant? Well, nothing specific. Uh, she wanted something that represented transformation and the phoenix is rising from its own ashes. And these? Well, a snake is negative self, tiger courage. She wanted something that represented her courage to defeat her darker self. I, I didn't think of it before. But you guys aren't the first ones to ask about her ink. Who else did? I didn't get his name, but he saw the phoenix on her at a bar. Our mystery man. What did he want? Wanted to get one like it. Wanted to know what it symbolized. Thank you. Thanks. Well, if this mystery guy is her lover, why would he ask about her tattoos? Maybe it's a stalker. So I looked into Cloud9, and I couldn't find any fires connected to them. The company's grown exponentially in the past three years. So someone there might have motive to cut Sarah out. Did you get anything from her laptop? Yeah, they're they're gonna sell the company to Largo Markets. It's a grocery chain. The deal's on the table as we speak, and Sarah's emails have her going back and forth with Jen, just arguing about it. And Jen never mentioned it? No. We need to find out how Sarah's death affects that deal. We need to speak with Jen. She's away making funeral arrangements. Of course. You guys are selling to Largo Markets, is that right? Yeah, it's still up in the air, but they want to acquire us and make Cloud9 their in-house organics brand. Was there any tension between Jen and Sarah over whether or not to sell? 
The numbers aren't right. We're not selling. How would you know you're never here? They were always aligned. That's what made this company a success. We heard that Jen resented Sarah's absence. Do you know anything about her personal life? Any debates that Sarah and Jen had were simply business partners discussing business. I'd like you to forward us that deal memo. Or we can get a warrant. I'll send you the documents. Just please keep them confidential. We still have a deal on the table. Thanks. Thank you. You saw Jen and Sarah arguing. I think Jen resented Sarah for carrying the business. Dad, what's going on? Hey, we have forensics from Sarah's anonymous apartment. She was definitely killed there. Did we canvas the building? Yeah, a neighbor said they heard someone leave at 11, and that's an hour after her death, but there's more. Vice bar staff has Johnny coming in late to work last night, 12 o'clock. But a red light cam ticketed his SUV around Sarah's apartment at 11.15. Okay, we're gonna go talk to him. Thanks. Looks like Johnny's drowning his guilt. Questions about Sarah Wembley. Who? Kelly. I get it. Developers want me out of business. Framing me makes it easy to shut me down. I'm not going anywhere. Actually, yes, you are. <laughs> my place, my rules. You don't want it to go down like this, man. It's only going to make you look guilty. Make room. I got nothing to hide. You people are unbelievable. Developers can't buy me out, so they charge me with murder. They won't stop till they clear the whole block for strollers and yoga. Your alibi is weak, Johnny. People at your bar say that you didn't show up until midnight. That's well past when Sarah was killed. It's a crowded spot. Tough to know who gets there when. This was taken outside Sarah's place shortly after her time of death. We also found rope in your SUV. Is that a crime? Yeah. If it's used to string up her body. If we search your place and find the leather necklace that was used to kill her, it's all going to be over for you. I didn't kill Kelly. Or Sarah, or whatever her name was. When you're on the stand, I would try to rein in that temper just a little bit. Listen, I'm pissed. She didn't tell me her real name or anything about her company, and now this. I thought you two were just seeing each other. I thought it wasn't serious. I wanted more. She didn't? That's not it. So then what happened? It's a fire! It's okay. It's okay. Get out! What? Get out! Get out! She woke up screaming about some fire. I told her, didn't matter what it was, I wanted to hear about it. I'd be there for her. And? She told me she was seeing someone else. Wonderful. Okay, let's go through this again. I understand you have Sarah Wembley's killer in custody. I understand that there is a reason to hurry to that conclusion. I can only assume you're referring to the red light photo of Johnny leaving the crime scene. Alvin, I'd appreciate it if you brought charges against Mr. Willard as quickly as possible. I can only respond to the facts of the case. So when you find the murder weapon in his possession, I trust you'll, you'll act accordingly? When or if? Come on. We both know that Johnny Willard's prosecution will serve certain developers with interests in the area. This bar will close and some careers will be made along the way. That is a dangerous assumption. I expect to see charges laid. We will prosecute Johnny to the fullest extent of the law. If he's guilty. Sarah was killed at 10. You were seen in her neighborhood at 11.15, and then you showed up at the bar at 12. That would have given you plenty of time. I didn't kill her. You said she screamed about a fire. Did she ever talk about what her ink meant? No. I told you she was private. A snake stands for negativity. A tiger, courage. Maybe Sarah finally got the courage to get rid of you. That doesn't mean I killed her. Then why did you show up at her apartment? 
a witness who put you in the lobby. The best play is the truth here, Johnny. I wanted to talk things out, but I lost my nerve to buzz her. So you never were actually inside her apartment? I was downstairs when he killed her. If I would have buzzed her, she might be alive. What did you get from Johnny? Well, he admits that he was at her building last night, but says that he didn't actually buzz up to her apartment. Well, let's see if Sarah's DNA shows up in his SUV and if the rope matches. Maybe Sarah's stalker showed up last night. Hey, I think I got something. I checked out the deal memo and corporate structure. Sarah had controlling interest in the company, but now all her shares just go to Jen. Sarah didn't want to sell. She didn't get a chance to sign the deal memo. Or maybe she wouldn't. Taking control over a company this large, that would definitely be motive. But Johnny's our prime suspect. We always try to recover the murder weapon. OK, well, we'll go talk to her first thing in the morning, because as you always say, follow the money. I didn't have time to buy groceries, and uh, there's a shocking lack of cereal delivery places in this town. I think she saved some for me. Thank you. Yeah, all you had left was this uh, cranberry flaxseed stuff that Tia left here. It's totally Good stuff. Girls. Speaking of uh, your lady friend, uh, it's pretty cool. Tia Tremblay nominated for a National Newspaper Award. She's a good writer. She deserves it. What's the matter? You're not that happy about it? No, I am. I'm just, you know, I'm wondering when she's going to start digging into my story. Oh, you think it might be time to reveal the Logan secret? No. In the death of every relationship I've ever had, present company excluded. Well, you care about her, right? Yeah. You trust her? Yeah. You know, it might be time to say, honey, I'm a telepath. Can you pass the milk? I don't know. Can you actually pass the milk? It's rude to reach across. Thank you. At this point, why would I tell her? It's been so long. Belated truth. I mean, when your worlds collide, how do you brace for impact? Better men than us have failed to answer that. And they probably phrased it better. Hey, you were getting some sage advice here for the low price of a bowl of soup. You serious? Okay, all day breakfast on me. Come on. I'll take you to a place where the grease fills every nook and cranny in your mouth. We need to talk. I'm afraid I have a meeting. Sarah's shares transferred to you now that she's dead. Yes, they do. And I don't appreciate the insinuation. You actually think I killed my best friend and strung her up? With that much money on the line, we don't rule anything out. And you said that she had distanced herself from the friendship. This is ridiculous. We know that you two fought about whether or not to sell. Yes, we did. We fought all the time. We were like sisters. We'd been in business together since we were 15. Was there ever a fire at Cloud9? I don't know what you're talking about. You can tell us, Jen. They can't know. They can't know. You're not making any sense. How do we know about the fire? He's inside. He's inside. Jen, he's inside. He's inside. Who was inside the fire? Sorry to interrupt. Um, could use you at the conference table. We have to finalize that counteroffer by 10 a.m. If you'll excuse me. You're going through with the sale? Uh, Jen wants a little more than they're offering right now, but I have every confidence we'll arrive at the right price. even more incentive if you own all of the shares. Right. Jen thought of the flames tattooed on Sarah again. This time there was a K in them. So whether she hired someone or acted alone, Jen looks good for it. This is about more than the deal. They promised to keep a secret about someone trapped in a fire. Maybe Jen killed her before Sarah could come clean about it. Can you blame Sarah for wanting to talk? Imagine having to keep that secret for so long. I know how she feels. You thinking about telling Tia? I don't know. I'm all for openness, right? But there are some things that are probably better kept a secret. A suspect, I'll grant you, but lying about their past and Sarah's tattoos doesn't mean Jen did it. The flames connect to the way Sarah's body was found. I know it. Look, you said when Toby read the tattoo artist, he saw our mystery man asking about Sarah's phoenix. So maybe he connects to the flames, or someone else does. 
The point is, when it comes to Sarah's murder, all of this is circumstantial. Well, did the search of Johnny's property turn up anything? His rope doesn't match, and there's no murder weapon found in this place, nothing in his SUV. But his DNA is all over Sarah's apartment. That is not surprising, because they were lovers. Jen said that she was home the night of the murder. Did we look into her? Get Deb to take a hard look into Jen's background. Let's see what he can find. See, I knew you were going to say that. Dev, what do you have? Well, Jen said she went to prep school with Sarah, so I found their online yearbook. And this memorial for a Kelly, Kelly Lerman. The same name that Sarah used for her alias. What's Sarah's commas there? It says MH, the debt can never be repaid. Who's MH? Uh, I may be able to answer that, actually. Kelly Lerman burned to death in a marijuana grow-up fire. Evidence suggested that other people were involved, but only one guy went down for it. This guy. Max Hauser. He was 20 at the time. Max Hauser, MH. The article says that the neighbors suspected satanic worship was going on at the house before it burned. Max is doing time at Kingston Penn. Dev, can you pull up Sarah's Phoenix tattoo? Yeah. Why? OK, look there, at the bottom by her spine. The lines in the flames bled. The pigment is different as well. So? So, the tattoo is older, probably done by a different tattoo artist. You know what? Give me a second. I might be able to isolate it based on the pigment. There. So Toby read Jen watching Sarah get this tattoo and then Sarah promising to keep something a secret. OK, ideas, anyone? Was Jen somehow responsible for Kelly's death and Sarah refused to keep it a secret any longer? Dev, find out where Jen is. Courage to overcome her darker self. Maybe the phoenix represented Sarah coming clean. And by tattooing over the old ink, it sent a clear message to Jen. Okay, thanks. Now, she's not at the office. You may have spooked her when you went to visit. Get over to her house. Yes. Door's open. Jennifer? Let me go this way. IIB! Toby! She's breathing. Do you have any idea who hit you with this? I remember coming into the kitchen for water. Yeah, put this on your head. OK, so then why don't we start by talking about Kelly Lerman? Whatever secret you're keeping cost Sarah her life and nearly cost you yours. The four of us started the grow up together. Sarah and I, Kelly and Max. Teenager's idea of a good business venture. An electrical issue caused the fire. Kelly was asleep inside. They didn't prosecute you and Sarah? Max had already done a stint in juvie. He was in love with Sarah. He took the fall even though it was Sarah who screwed up the wiring. Sarah referred to herself as Kelly in her other life. She covered up her matching tattoo with new ink. We got the tattoos as a way of remembering Kelly. And as a promise to keep it a secret? Do you really think this has something to do with Sarah's murder? Do you recognize him? Did you hire him? Hire him? No, he followed Sarah to my house. He knew about her life as Kelly. He was also asking around town about her tattoos. Dev. Says Max Hauser got out of prison a month ago. Are you saying that Max killed Sarah and that he's trying to kill me? Oh, we don't know anything yet. Sarah went to see Max about a year ago. Same time the tattoo started. Yeah. I tried to warn her not to contact him, that it would only stir up the past. A forensics team is on its way. We're going to call an ambulance. You've got to get yourself checked out. I have to go back to the office. All right, just make sure you're around people. Let's go see Max. Maybe Max has a guy out. He saw Johnny with Sarah. In a jealous rage, he killed her. So he goes after Jen to punish them both? 
Gav, I need you to put an APB out on a van. It reads Byford's Pest Control on the side. Will do. Hey, uh, Hauser's parole officer has his address listed as a rooming house on Sherburne. I'll send you the address, and Klein's already secured a warrant. Thanks, Steph. Hauser's in Toronto. Well, let's welcome him to town. of Sarah Wembley. It's the murder weapon. I've never seen that before. Well, your prints were also found on the bookend that struck Jennifer. I didn't kill Sarah. I didn't attack Jen. Then why'd you attack us? In prison, someone's in your cell uninvited. You come in swinging. Right, so it's just a coincidence that you show up in Toronto when Sarah turns up dead. A shame is what it is. You went to prison for a fire that she was responsible for. And? She was found strung up, surrounded by a ring of flames. You know, neighbors from your old grow up, they thought that you guys were into satanic worship. It's a small town. People overreact to black clothes and heavy metal. Listen, I went down for Kelly's death. And yeah, Sarah screwed up the wiring at the grow up, but I cared about her. She had a future. I didn't. She cut off all contact with you when you were in prison, right? That must have upset you. Yeah, well, I made my choice. I did my time. And she reached out to you. Maybe that stirred up some old emotions. Sarah came to see you. She showed you her tattoos. She said we could rise from our ashes just like a phoenix. She was trying to help me. Said maybe there was still something between us. But then you found out about Johnny. Who? Johnny. Listen, man. I told her it wouldn't work. That she was feeling guilty. She asked me to come to Toronto when I got out. You found the murder weapon in your room. You're the only one who had motive for both of the crimes. If you're not responsible, how do you explain this? Someone's trying to frame me. Well, that is not very original. Well, they'd have to know a lot about your past. Jen and Sarah did a great job of keeping that a secret. It was a guy. Followed Sarah to my room and house. She came to see me. Is this a guy? Yeah. Yeah, that's the guy. Murder weapon and motive. Looks like Max is going back to prison. When we accused him of murder, I got disbelief. You need to identify the stalker. Do you have any luck with the APB? Uh, yeah. It turns out there is no Byford's pest control. The van's registered to a Ryan Turner. He's a private investigator. Good work, Corporal. Have forensics run Max's DNA and see if it matches the crime scene. In the meantime, let's find out who hired Turner. You can ask him yourself. We just brought him in. So why were you following Sarah and Jennifer? I was putting together a file. For who? If I revealed my client list, I wouldn't have one for long. I'm sure you're familiar with the privilege my license gives me. Sarah Wembley was killed possibly as a result of your investigation. That's unfortunate. But I had nothing to do with it. Well, you're the only one who might be able to help us identify her killer, so you're gonna tell us what you know. Who hired you? Even if I wanted to, they paid cash and didn't give me a name. Brent Sanders. Jen could be with him now. Yeah. Well, if Brent dug up Sarah's history and her life is Kelly, he could have framed Max. Turner gives him Max's address. Brent plants the necklace, makes it look like revenge. Hey, Dev. Did you contact Jen? It's after hours. No one's answering at reception. But I checked on Brent Sanders. That guy's been to the Caymans five times in the last year. Setting up accounts. Thanks, Dev. A few more signatures and Largo Markets will own Cloud9, and you will be a very wealthy woman. I, uh, just want to make sure it's the right move. 
Of course, and I know these last few days have been really hard. But trust me, this is your best move, all right? Brent Sanders. This is a private meeting. Not anymore. Why'd you hire a private investigator to look into your colleagues? What? I, I can explain. So explain to us why you hired Ryan Turner. Five million for me if I get the price down 15%. Logo Markets got a cloud nine at a discount. He was going to get a payout. That is ridiculous. We know about the offshore accounts. Okay, I've had enough of this. This is insulting. Sarah knew what the company was worth. That's why she wasn't willing to accept your appraisal. The number that you two fought over, who gave it to you? You did. Right, so Turner got back to you with stories about her past and the grow up, and you thought you could blackmail her into selling the company. She wasn't going to sell. I did not kill her. You tried to pin it on Max. Forensics is pretty amazing. A few flakes of skin under her fingernails, and it's all over for you. I imagine we'll find scratches on your arms. You killed Sarah, and you tried to frame Max? Jen, you can't possibly believe it. Okay, okay. Oh, come on. Oh. You're under arrest for the murder of Sarah Wembley. <sighs> I heard congratulations are in order. You heard correctly. I appreciate your efficiency. Even though it means Johnny's bar will remain open. You gotta kill her off the street, Alvin. And there are other ways to satisfy the powers that be. Not to worry. I'll figure something out. Away. The same. Well, the new cycle gets its ritualistic killer and a frame job to boot. And forensics found Sarah's DNA all over the back of Brent's car. Largo Markets is under investigation for corporate espionage, and Jennifer's gonna keep the company. And her and Max Hauser might work it out after all. I suppose it's never too late to tell the truth. So she parked on my spot again. What am I supposed to do? I think you're gonna exit the car. It's a good idea. It's not bad. You okay? Yeah, I'm good. Let me see about this case we closed today. Is it true he already set up accounts in the Caymans? Confidential, <laughs> but true. Wow. Are we telling secrets tonight, Toby? Actually, yeah, we are. Really? Yes. Um... Okay, this is freaking me out a little. I've told you that I, I read faces. Right. That is not true. Okay, so... What do you do? I read, uh, people's minds. Thoughts. I deliver baby elephants. Sometimes polar bears. Um, midway for all species, really. It's fair. I know it sounds crazy. All right, well, this couple here looks like they're arguing. He's going to get down on his knees and propose. She's going to say no and walk out of here. He's gonna call his friend to grab some drinks to drown his sorrow. Okay, I got it. You know them. Is that it? You had a heavy case and now you're trying to lighten things up with a practical joke. That's really funny. It's not a joke. It's who I am, it's what I do. But I've been afraid to tell you because it's ruined every single relationship I've ever had. woman in the red. She wants her check. But she also wants dessert. Uh, 
You're saying you can read my mind? I can't read yours. I don't know if that's because of your epilepsy or the medication. I think that's why it would work. Because I have no idea what you're about to say or do, and I love that. You gotta help me out. I have no idea what you're thinking. I'm sorry.